about that. We had a little technical difficulties. I'm Tammy, in case you missed it. I'm Melanie. And we are here at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden today, and we're going to talk to you about our friend Mo. And actually, we have lightning back there, too. We have two two-toed sloths. So Mo is here on his jungle gym, kind of hanging out. He's a little bit active, not too much active. Uh, but we will talk about him. Melanie's going to work behind us and try to get uh, lightning up and awake. She's been kind of sleepy today. We've kind of got a rainy, dreary day going on. Um, but yeah, let's take out Mo. All right, so I'm gonna give him a little bit of food while he's out. Got some watermelon for him. How's that, buddy? Is that good? There you go. So I am feeding Mo a variety of foods. You might see some different fruits that I'm offering him, but that is not what he would be eating in the wild. Out in the wild, he's gonna be eating a lot of what we call browse. That's just your plant matter. It's everything that's on a tree. It's your leaves, your branch, your bark, everything like that even the berries and the flowers that he might be eating so it's kind of fun we do have a challenge for you guys we do have an activity that I'm going to tell you about a little bit later and that has to do with what they do eat out in the wild all right so while Mo's hanging out here you can see that cute little tongue of his it's really funny this is a, this is not a sloth thing this is a Mo thing he just likes to hang out his tongue oh Liz has a question she's asking me how heavy can they get well, it's really funny. Mo here, he's a 21, 20 year old Mo, Mo. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry guys. He's a 20 year old male and he weighs roughly 17 to 18 pounds. Our female up there, Lightning, she is actually seven years old and she weighs 25 pounds. That is not your average sloths. They're usually gonna run in this 17 to 20 pound range. Um, our lady up there, she's just a little big girl. All right, so while Mo's hanging out here, you guys might be able to see his eyes. He's got those open for you. These guys have really bad eyesight. So he's got these teeny tiny pupils. They don't let a lot of light in and they don't really dilate. Do you know why that is? They're nocturnal, so they don't really need to see a lot. It's dark where they live. They live way up in the rainforest canopy. They live up there all year round. It's pretty dark way up in the trees. And since they are mainly nocturnal, they are only awake at night. They don't really need to see very much. Um, I don't know if you can show his toes up here. I really want to tell you guys why he's called a two-toed sloth. It's really confusing because it's actually his fingers. Can you guys see that? He's got one, two on his front hand. But now if you look way back here at his feet, he actually has three. So we're really looking at their fingers. A two-toed sloth has two fingers and a three-toed sloth has three fingers, but all sloths have three toes. I know it's a little confusing. How you doing over there, Mo? Do you want another treat? Let's try giving him a blackberry. Do you guys like your fruit? Because Mo really likes his fruit. Good job, bud. He might just hold on to that for a few minutes, and that's okay. Now, if you're looking at his face, can you see his nose and see how big that nose is? That's what he uses as his main sense. He smells really, really well, but he doesn't see very well, like we said. So he's gonna use that nose to be able to find anything and everything. He's gonna find fruit, he might find a mate, he might find another hiding spot. But yeah, he does use that big nose to be able to smell around. You gonna get sleep with that in your mouth? Is that good? All right, Anna is also asking us a question. Why do they hang upside down? That is a really great question. So sloths were built to live in a tree and hang upside down their entire lives. So everything about them is flipped from ours. They don't have their organs in the same position or in the same shape as ours. Um, everything is kind of inverted. So they're gonna live their lives upside down so that they can hang in trees and they can kind of represent a different part of the rainforest than other animals. It's kind of ironic. Think about it kids at home, if you are hanging upside down, you're on a jungle gym, right? And you're hanging upside down, what happens? Do you get kind of dizzy? You get kind of lightheaded? You might get a little nauseous? Well, that's what's gonna happen here with Mo if he is right side up. So everything about him is flipped from us. So these guys were designed to live like this 16 plus hours at one time that he can hang without moving. It's kind of crazy. All right, Tara is asking, are there different kinds of sloths? There are. There's about five or so different species. There's a couple different of two-toed sloths. So he is what we call a Linnaeus sloth. And there's also a Hoffman's two-toed sloth. But there's a few different three-toed sloths as well. One of the favorites being the pygmy sloth. So those guys are really small three-toed pygmy sloths. They live in the mangroves. They'll drop into the mangroves themselves and they can actually swim. Did you guys know sloths are really good swimmers? It's kind of insane. So while we're talking about the different kinds of sloths, 
if you have seen anything with a sloth on it, you've seen that raccoon face that has like the smile, especially if you've seen Zootopia. That is a three-toed sloth. So next time you see one, look to see with their fingers how many they have. Now, Mo does not have that raccoon face um, because he's a two-toed sloth. So they do look a lot different in the face. They have a big nose, but the three-toed sloths are gonna have a very, very flat face. How's it going, Melanie? Still sleeping. Still sleeping. And lazy, just like your typical sloth. That's right. So this is what sloths are typically doing during the day. They sleep roughly 16 to 18 hours in a day. Plus, like I said, it is actually raining here in Cincinnati and we are in a live rainforest. So it is raining on us as well. So this is what she likes to hunk do whenever it's raining or when she's wet, she likes to hunker down. Still hanging out, Mo? Do we have another question? We do. Mason wants to know why they have so much fur if they live in the rainforest and what their fur feels like. That's a great question. So in the wild, this is not what Mo would look like. He would actually be green. The reason they have so much fur is because they're gonna try to keep their body nice and warm. So again, in the rainforest, it is raining all the time, so they're gonna be wet all the time. And because they're wet all the time and because they move so slowly, they are gonna have algae growing all over their body. So they're gonna be a green, almost a black in color. So Mo is very, very clean because here, he does get to move around a little bit more and it doesn't rain on him constantly. So he's not gonna have that algae growing on him. Plus, inside that fur, there's gonna be a whole ecosystem that lives in there. But here, we don't have the bugs that would typically live in his fur to help keep his skin nice and clean. But his fur is pretty soft. There are bits that are kind of coarse, like if you have a dog that has coarse hair, but most of it's pretty soft and it's very thick. But it's kind of nice because it's got a built-in defense system where whenever it rains on his belly, it's gonna roll right off so that he himself is not getting wet all the way down to the skin. All right, you're doing great, Mo. All right, Lily wants to know what their favorite food is. Well, they really, really like a lot of different fruits. Like uh, you've seen, I might've been feeding Mo some watermelon and some blueberries. He really likes plum and strawberries also. But one of his other favorite foods is corn on the cob. So let's see which one Mo likes right now. Do you want some corn on the cob, buddy? How about a strawberry? This is a nice big strawberry, huh? Okay, he's going for the strawberry. <laughs> Um, this is the rest of his diet plate while he tries to eat that. Um, it's kind of interesting looking. They get a lot of greens. He's so funny. He's just going to hold on to it. Um, but we do give them a variety of food. They get a lot of different fruits and vegetables. They also get a lot of greens. We also will give them hard boiled egg just to make sure that they're getting the protein that they need, that they're missing from all the wild browse that they would be eating. He's so funny. He likes to sleep, I don't know why, so much while he's eating. Okay, Freddie wants to know if sloths have predators. Oh my gosh, Freddie, that is a great question. They do have predators. They have two really big predators. Their main predator that everybody thinks about is a jaguar. So they have to be really, really sneaky and they have to be able to hide really well from all these jaguars. So one of the things that they do is that they make sure that they go to the bathroom only once a week and they do that by coming down to the base of the tree, they poof and they pee all at once, and then they climb back up to the tree. By doing this, they're not giving away their location of where they're hiding from their jaguars. Now, the other predator that most people don't realize that they have is a harpy eagle. So harpy eagles can, are big enough that they can swoop down and they can take an adult sloth out of the tree. They may go after juveniles because they're a little bit smaller, but they can um, carry a full adult sloth. So those are the two biggest predators, the jaguars and the harpy eagle. All right, hi Ken, thank you for watching. So what do they smell like? Um, you know, not very well. They smell kind of stinky. Um, they are, I don't know, what do you think? Smell like poop a lot? So they're, they're not very clean animals. Um, they have bad breath, so I will tell you that much. Um, especially when they've been eating a lot and they eat a lot of hard boiled eggs. Um, so yeah, it smells like bad eggs sometimes, so. And they also smell a lot like wet dogs right now because it is raining. So when their fur gets wet, they do smell like a wet dog. Are they in danger? Are they in danger? At this time, they are not considered to be in danger, surprisingly enough. But as their habitat gets destroyed, um, their numbers keep going down more and more. But at this time, they are not considered to be in danger. The pygmy three-toads are considered to be threatened, though. 
That's a good question. All right, Jen wants to know how long do they live? So in our environment, I told you Mo is 20. He should be able to live up to closer to 40s. So he's only what we consider middle-aged right now. Um, in the wild, they would live to be into their late teens or early 20s. Uh, but in a zoo setting, obviously, he has free health care. He has free uh, food delivered to him every day. He also has free room and board, so he should live to be a lot longer, a lot older. How's it going, Mo? Are you still enjoying that strawberry? So this is definitely by far one of his favorite foods. All right, Willa wants to know who's his favorite caretaker. That's me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's really interesting. So since Mo has such really bad eyesight, he knows each one of us based on our smells, not by the way we look. So he can look at me and Melanie and be like, I don't know who's who, but I know what she smells like and I know what she smells like. And every day is a different day. So one day he might like me, one day he might like Melanie. Most days he likes all of us though. There are about six of us that do get to take care of him and we are very excited about that. So, yeah, what's next, Bree? Do you cut their nails? We actually will cut their nails. We let them stay really long because that's what he uses to move around on the tree branches. He needs to be able to hold on pretty firmly. Uh, we don't want him to fall off of his tree. Um, but whenever they do get a little bit too long or too sharp, we will actually cut them. How's it going? Oh, and he's done. Just like that, guys. He's done. Are you done with the strawberry? There you go. Good job. Huh? Yeah. Do you guys want to see what their diet looks like? Oh, he sees all these leaves. He's like, what's going on? All right, so here's their diet right now. So we've got some corn on the cob. We do have a bunch of different fruits and vegetables. Now this brown stuff that you see on here, it is just a vitamin. It's because what he would be eating in the wild with all of his browse matter is gonna have a whole different nutritional value. Um, so we have to kind of uh, um, make up for that. So, and then again, we said we give him hard boiled egg. That's what this is right here. Just so that he has some protein. Where are you going, Mo? <laughs> There he goes. He's just doing circles for you guys. Some days he'll just hang out here and not move at all. So this is not lovely. And our slots related to monkeys or koalas. They are not. So surprisingly enough, these guys are closely related to armadillos. What else, Melanie? What are they related to? Anteaters. Yeah. One so, of the fun facts I like to talk about is that um, sloths are obviously from a Spanish-speaking area, so they're from Central and South America, and so sloths are called perezosos, which is also an adjective for being lazy or sluggish. Yeah. Oh, we have a question. Rowan says, do they make noises? Oh my gosh. So I did not know that sloths made noises. For the longest time, I never heard Mo do anything other than make a hiss or a growl if he was really mad. But now that we have our lovely lady lightning up there, we have heard so many noises coming out of both of them. They make a lot of noises where they talk to each other. They do a lot of kissing at each other. They do some hissing at each other. They do a lot of growling, but they also bark. And to me, that was crazy to actually hear them bark. The other thing that I've heard is that in the wild, when the female sloth is ready to find a boyfriend, she's gonna scream until her boyfriend finds her. All right, so Brittany wants to know what kind of teeth do they have? Actually, they have what's called false canines. So you may see the little bumps protruding right at the bottom of his chin there. Let's see if I can get him to open up for us. Can you, you open? Can see the do you want some blackberry? Oh. <laughs> He's like, oh, I want more strawberry, guys. <laughs> and we so they're called some. false canines because they look like canines, but they are not related to canids or dogs. Um, and they don't have any front teeth, which are called incisors, but they do have some really sharp molars in the back to be able to crush up the leaves and get the juices and um, hydration from the leaves. Right. And I also think that's why most tongue sticks out because he doesn't have any front teeth. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have the question, are you going to have babies? That is the hope. So we were approved by the Species Survival Planner, the SSP, to get lightning over here. So that's why we have our female lightning now, is that hopefully lightning and Mo will like each other enough that we're gonna have babies. We are actually training lightning to come down for us to do ultrasounds on a periodic basis. Um, so one day we're hoping that we'll have a surprise in the ultrasound and we'll be able to see that we'll have a baby. But until that happens, we're gonna let them hang out together and continue to hopefully have a bond where we will have babies in the future. You're so active. 
All right, so the activity, guys, that we would like you to participate in is to collect some leaves, which is going to be representative of what they eat in the wild. So sloths eat a lot of leaves. You guys are gonna go collect some leaves and make some art, whether you're going to make a, um, a sloth out of leaves or a rainforest or even a sloth in the rainforest. And you guys can submit the, the artwork to the Cincinnati Zoo's uh, website or Facebook. The directions will be in the caption there. Um, but we want to see your artwork. We saw some really great artwork on Rico the porcupine, and that was so cool. And Rico really enjoyed seeing it as well. Um, but you guys can even put like a heavy book on top of your leaves and make some pressed leaf art too. I'm super excited because this challenge is called Leaf It to Mow. So. <laughs> Sorry. And you guys can check out your home safari every day, seven days a week at three o'clock exactly. So be sure to tune in and we will have so many more animals to go on a <laughs> safari with you.